good to see see you all here thank you for taking your time to listen to us uh, some of you i recognize do we recognize or some students that have been with us and it's wonderful to see how you keep on showing up over and over it's basically the same faces <laughs> the dedicated ones um, we wanted to basically we're going to go on for an hour now <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about boundaries and working with the boundaries in as a diamond practitioner but it can also be applied to any form of you know practitioner where you work with people actually basically and also responsibilities and, and responsibilities yeah and then uh, you can ask questions during this time but we, there will also be a slot in the end where we will go through more questions and answers but please don't hesitate to ask the questions because it's what you bring in that also brings juice to these meetings we have a like we have a little structure or a framing and then we see what who is here and what would you like to know yeah basically Mm -hmm. So when we spoke about what subject we wanted to have this week, this is our third webinar now, mm, we said that boundaries and responsibility is a good topic, especially because there is a big shitstorm going on. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but around uh, sexual healing practitioners and there's guru stalking and there are people being abused and misused in sessions and et cetera, et cetera. And we find this to be a really, really important topic to raise. And uh, we spoke about it, you know, before you all came online. So it's not only for a practitioner, but it can also be for you as a client. Maybe you're new into this field and you come to a session and you don't, like, you don't know your boundaries, you don't know what to expect. And you're basically in fresh hands within a new field with somebody that you don't know. So this can also give information for like, hey, this fits or this is doesn't fit, for example. So it applies to everyone basically. And and also, so Dian and me, we are the founders of the the armoring training, and basically we founded that with the intention of um, creating or supporting this field to grow with responsible practitioners. Because it's such a delicate field and it's quite new and especially when it comes to sexual healing and There are so many people who've been uh, misused abused or come with sexual wounding and they have No boundaries whatsoever and they don't know how to set the boundaries and it's nothing you learn in a heartbeat heartbeat it takes a lot of time and there comes the responsibility and as a practitioner here it's really our responsibility to help and guide our clients to grow in a safe and responsible way this is kind of the the core of the dearming training that we created how can we help people grow in a safe and responsible way without them being traumatized or without uh, we as practitioners serving our own needs yeah which is a big shadow side in this work as well and of course it's perfect because the prey and the predator is like it's the two sides of the same coin the one can't exist with another so i mean this field is just like perfect for this form of, of shadow work as we call it so or shadow, the, play. Or shadow play exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> which we can turn into shadow work so mm -hmm. definitely and uh yeah, and it's quite interesting. I think it's quite interesting to see what's happening now that like people are starting to stand up more, people are starting to speak up more, what they have felt, how they feel abused in sessions, etc. And so I also feel that we can use, as conscious beings, we can use this as fuel to grow and transform this shadow on a collective level. It's not so much only about the personal, it's also on a collective scale. Because it's interesting that it's in so many places all over the world, this shadow is coming up now at the same time. So for me, that's, I'm highly fascinated and I love working on the collective level. So we all play a little part of the game, whether we want it or not, <laughs> somehow. Um, okay, do you want to add something to that, Dion? No, so far so clear. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. 
I mean, I just wanted to maybe say that uh, the boundary, the topic of boundary and responsibility, they really tie in as one. Knowing that uh, if I'm a therapist, people come to me and they really trust me. They trust me with the most delicate, the most hurt, the most vulnerable part of themselves. Yeah. And I need to understand that as a practitioner. I need to really know that this is not a kiddies game. This is not a regular massage where I can just like, da, da, da. if I really want to be useful, like on a deep level, then I need to be very responsible because if I'm not, my client's going to feel it instantly and they're not going to trust me. They're not going to open to me. So, and then within that, then the boundary are really creating a safe frame, if you like, playing field. Mm. So this is why responsibility and the boundary actually go hand in hand, you know. Mm. It's part of the same picture. Mm. That's all you can take it over. Mm. Yeah, and that's what is so interesting with, uh, with boundaries, because boundaries... I mean, we can sure we can see them as as a, a structure, a limitation, but actually, it's not. Boundaries create a space for re relaxation and expansion and freedom. So, and freedom. So boundaries are not static. You know, maybe you, of course we're all different. We all have different levels of experience. We all different levels of openness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So our boundaries will be different, but. That's why we need to work in a slow, steady pace. We don't hurt ourselves. We hurt anybody else. And then, of course, life happens. Shit happens sometimes. And then we clean it up nicely. <laughs> but what I think is important is that, especially when we work in a, in a session, in a framing of a session, like everything counts from that that the client goes on to your website and see what you offer, uh, the prices, what times of the week, et cetera, et cetera. Already there, you're shaping your boundaries as, as a practitioner. So I want to speak into that with different forms of boundaries. <clears throat> First, what is important when you work as a practitioner, we're going to specifically talk about the arming and sexual healing today because that's what we are offering more or less. But of course, you can apply it to other things too. So first, uh, for example, my expertise being that I worked with sexual energy in my sessions. So I had to go through myself feeling, okay, so where am I willing to go with this? I mean, there are people working, they're having intercourse with their clients to go very intimate, et cetera, et cetera. And that's not my cup of tea. Like, that's not what I'm doing. So I'm very clear on my website that, okay, I work with sexual healing, I work with pleasure, but I do not do any um, like there is no kissing included there is no exchange of bodily fluids I don't support uh, male ejaculation for example and it's not like you come to me getting wanked off or anything like everything I do is very clear written on my website this is for healing for transformation I do this to support people's growth always so already there I start I, I have gone through myself okay this is what I offer, this is what I'm willing to offer, and here is my ground. That's what I'm offering. Great and this, client. Yeah. And just to kind of give you a picture of what it looks like, is that if somebody would, for example, client would contact Sana not knowing the boundaries, if she wasn't so clear on a website, even before she makes a contact, they can have all sorts of expectations already and put potentials mm -hmm. for conflict, potentials for unfulfilled expectations, potentials mm -hmm. for misunderstandings. Mm -hmm. This is all stuff that you don't really need mm. and the way to deal with it is to be super clear this is the boundary this is the field this is what i do 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 this yeah. is what i don't 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 this is what you do this is what you don't and then we can all relax <laughs> no but really no 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 of course of yeah course. yeah because yeah. you know if, if you think about the boundary say a client comes in and if they don't know the boundaries they think that maybe they can express themselves up to here but they're not really sure if maybe the other sides are going to be accepted, so they're kind of in a gray zone here. Mm. So that kind of gives them fear, gives them instability. So they, stand, they stay in this area, not giving them full freedom to really dive in deep up to where they can. So when you mm. set a boundary, so boundary is here, the freedom comes from knowing that I can fully relax and trust mm. up to here. And then I know I can't go further, but it kind of removes that gray zone. It, this is where the freedom comes in a boundary, you know. Yeah. And I'm also thinking like the opposite, like with Dian, he doesn't work with sexual energy anymore. So that's like an opposite 
uh, the opposite to what I do. So you would say, okay, my sessions are clothes on and you cannot explain internal dearming or internal work and I don't touch genitals. So that's his boundaries, for example. He doesn't work with sexual energy. So then people know, okay, this is Dian and that's what he does and this is Anna and this is what she does, for example. Hmm. Yeah? And I, I like to speak into that another, another thing when it comes to boundaries as a practitioner is to be really clear. Many people who work within this field can come, I don't, definitely don't say everybody, but some come in and they're like, oh, I'm going to help and I'm going to give and, and do, 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 do. I was one of those. I was giving a lot more than I could actually. It was uh, I basically overstepping my own boundaries in the beginning mm -hmm. because I thought I was just giving, 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 but actually I was pleasing more than giving. And then I had to learn to not be burned out. And I, when I started to see what I was actually doing, then I had to be really clear with myself to, okay, so when, what time of the day do I answer my emails? When, when do, when can a client contact me and not? Um, what um, what days of the week am I working, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's another form of boundary where what I had to state to myself and keep, because otherwise there is also this. Uh, it's easy that people start to contact you and they want more and they start to ask you questions all hours, like any time of the day, basically in the middle of the night, and you're just like, okay it's 12 o'clock in Saturday night. Can you just give me a break? <laughs> and there is like, okay, no, I'm not going to answer this now. Like you can write to my email, you can do this, you can do that. Be really firm and strict with your own boundaries. Often people uh, or clients within this field have an idea that people working with healing and transformation have an, are an endless source of service and never run out of energy and are not human and we don't need to get paid and <laughs> we don't need to eat. We can just help, which is not true, of course. <laughs> so there's like the perfect way for us to state our own boundaries and take care of ourselves. Okay. Um, and then it's another thing which is important to have on the website, I think, is, uh, is uh, with the all different payment options, for example. So do they have to pay a deposit? Uh, when, do you want to have the full amount paid beforehand? Or is it 50% before and 50% upon arrival? Is there a cancellation policy? Because all these things will happen. People will not show up and it's a part of growing within the field. People will not show up. They will have all kinds of excuses. Sometimes people don't show up because they are afraid. So if you don't have, for example, a 50% prepayment, that will encourage people to show up as well. So these are also a form of boundaries that you set already from the start. So the more clear you can be, the more you can relax into it and you just miss all these un unnecessary um, confrontations or hustle yeah. that happen. You want to add something to that, uh, Dian? No, I'm kind of clear on that. I'm quite eager to move into uh, boundaries within the session. Or if yeah. there's anything else to talk before the session. Yeah, I'm yeah I think one more thing is, is that when, when the client shows up, you know, and you sit down, or I, what I do is I always sit down and have an initial conversation. And then uh, I state my boundaries very clearly, especially working with sexual energy. And uh, I say, okay, first we talk about why the client is there. And then I say, uh, okay, so whatever happens in this space happens in this space. And, you know, I'm not going to marry you. I'm not going to run away with you. We're not going to get kids. We're not going to be lovers. We're not going to kiss. We're not going to make out. We're not going to go on a date. So I'm being already very clear from the start that there's no potential for romantic dreaming in this space. So the session is here in this moment and I'm here in the service for the client for their benefits and growth. And it's not about me. And so we always want to state for the client that I'm here in service of you. And this is the commitment that we as practitioners always shall have. This is for them. This is for them. And this is for them. <laughs> Basically. And one and, more thing maybe to just yeah. to add is to uh, also 
uh, at the beginning of the session, I tell my clients or the boundary and responsible part is that whatever we agree to do in this meeting while we're sitting having a cup of tea before we started, this is what's going to happen in a session. Mm. We will not cross that line. So whatever we agree to do, say for example, we are going to work on a pelvic area over the clothes, mm. uh, there's not going to be imitation of sexual energy, then this is how it's going to be. And if mm. something changes in the session, which very often does, mm. when the the cognitive mind releases goes back and the reptile brain kicks in it's a different understanding of the world and suddenly boundary field is not set anything everything can happen and then it's very important to actually stick to it because I mean, we're going to go deeper into it in a moment but basically that's another form of boundary before the session that whatever we agree it's going to happen that only that is going to happen you know and especially working then with sexual healing. So what we teach our students to do is we always want verbal consent. So we don't want any guessing games or little nods or anything. So <clears throat> yeah. if, you, if, you, if the agreement is to do internal de so you're going to go inside the yoni or, an anus, or the anus, then you most likely will touch the yoni or the cock before as well. But you don't want to just start touching a body and then suddenly you have a hand on the yoni or the cock. So again, for the client to relax, you want to say, okay, I'm going to touch your body like this first. So in my case, I always start with, almost always start with my clients on the belly and then I'm going to turn them around and I kind of explain this to them. So I go, you're going to start on the belly and I turn you around I'm going to press and massage and, you know, see what your body says. And before I touch your yoni or your cock, I'm going to let you know, and I'm going to ask you for permission. And then I always want my client to state, I want you to touch my yoni, or I want you to touch my cock. That is not only a really, really empowering statement, but may, most of us, there has another level to it also, because most of us have never learn to ask somebody to directly touch our genitals so it's also quite vulnerable so it becomes both empowering and and, and uh de-armoring in itself to express that it can be challenging it can be super challenging and i had honestly i had um, uh, clients that couldn't say this especially when it comes to internals so first i always say okay before you want me to touch your yoni I want you to ask, you know, I want you to touch my yoni. And then, I, and, and then again, always before I go inside, I do the same request again. So the client can all the time know that suddenly I'm not going to be with my fingers inside the yoni or an anus. It's, it's a very conscious process where, we, where it's a dance, a very conscious dance to empower a client into their, into their power. So sometimes I even had women, I remember one woman especially, and before I, I wanted to put my finger inside her yoni, she couldn't express it. And I sat there and I was like, and this is the greatest because she was so used to being used by men. So she, ha she didn't know her boundary. She couldn't express it. She was so used to just being taken basically. And when we, uh, when we did this exercise and she finally managed to express the the uh, the statement <clears throat> and i put my fingers inside she both felt she she had this tremendous release and started to cry and she also had had pain in her yoni for many years which disappeared because suddenly she she took back her power and asked for what she wants and she for the first time in her life she owned her body and she owned what she wanted this is like this is super super important with the verbal agreement always and so we 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 if they can't state it that means clearly that they don't they can't express the boundaries and then we have the responsibility, the responsibility to hold space until they can maybe it needs one two three four five sessions cool then we wait because they have to know that it's not up to somebody else to do something to their body, but it's up to them to ask for what they need. To invite it. What they want and mm. to invite it. So that's, that's uh, and I went a little further in, but that's always what I explain in the beginning of a session. Like, I always want verbal consent. This is what I'm going to do. There are no surprises. And again, 
is always for the client. So I tell them that there is nothing you have to do to me or perform. And if you any time at any time want to stop, you just. So before we move on to uh, the boundary responsibility within the session, are there any questions just to clarify the boundary before the session starts? Or can we just move on? If there is a question, just raise your hand. We'll unmute you, otherwise we'll move on. There's one in the chat, let's see. No, there's ah, I forget, okay. Okay, let's move on then. Oh, Laura. Wait, wait, wait. Are you unmuted yourself, okay. Yeah, I was wondering, like, um, <clears throat> for a session, you said boundaries, but when you can kind of feel that there is um, stuff unsaid, you know, like when you feel that there's still an expectation, but they're not expressing it, but you can kind of sense that it's there. Mm -hmm. like when Yeah. But I didn't, then what I do. Yeah. Yeah. So this is great. This, this is when we come into to shadow work. But <clears throat> when, when you, if you notice these hidden desires, if you're that sensitive, this is great. For me, I always lift it up to the light and I say, hey, what's going on? Yeah. What, I feel this and this. And I've been brutally honest with what I feel and trusting my intuition and trusting my instinct. And then I make sure that the client feels safe enough to say it, even if it's embarrassing, even if they want to have sex with me, even if they, you know, have the big romantic dreaming or want me to touch the cock or whatever. I just say, this is what I feel. This, this is what happens in your body. And when we do it with love, people won't feel shamed. And this is great because it's also a great way to have a client to own their desires and not being shamed for it. So did this answer your question? Basically, if something is left unclear, you have to sort it out. You have to talk about it clearly before you move on, before the session starts, you know. And always trust your intuition when you feel that. It's, it's more or less 99.9% .9 right. <laughs> okay, any more questions for the boundary responsibility before the session starts? No. Okay, Sana. Let's go to the boundary in the session. <clears throat> The boundary in the session. Okay, so client laying, da laying down, and again, we have said what will happen, what will not, and um, that there will be no surprises, and the session is for the client. Now, if there is a, a client who has a difficulty with the boundaries or stating what they want, you can play a little game with them. So it calls the bossy massage. And and uh, then you have the client first to tell you where to touch you. There's also a form called Wheel of Consent, which is amazing. If you haven't already came across it, we teach it in the training. It's also um, a lot of courses out there now. And uh, Dr. Betty Martin is the founder of it. It's absolutely amazing when it comes to clear up your own boundaries and get to know to work with shadow work, etc. So I often use this in my sessions to strengthen and help people with their boundaries. And one way there is always the verbal, uh, verbal uh, agreement or the verbal request. So then before I start a session, if I notice that there's a client with difficulty stating their boundaries, I will have them to ask me when to touch their body and how to touch their body. And again, this is nothing, some people can think, oh, but that's just, come on, just put your hand on my arm or just put it on my back. But again, I've had this uh, experiences with, with someone who can't even ask me to put the hand on their back because they are so afraid that it would be wrong answer or they just can't, they're so, so far away from their own core that they can't even ask me to put the hand on their back without being afraid of doing wrong. Uh, Paul has a question. Sana can yeah. take it. Uh, let me see. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I have this uh, difficulty to keep this sort of intake uh, talk and uh, um, getting to know each other, creating trust, uh, setting boundaries, um, talking through history, uh, which issues are deal uh, you're dealing with. I'm just having difficulty to keep this in a short amount of time. So, maybe... So don't. 
No, so so we do have problems to keep it short. So, what's what's a typical duration to? No, but this is it. So basically, Sana, let me take it. So if you, if you know that you take so much time to arrive to a desired result, built into the session. So, so a five session could be I don't know. Is it two hours a session? So from now on, your session is three hours, and your clients coming in. This is also your boundary and responsibility that you know that it will take so long. So don't try to rush it, like follow your natural way of working. But yeah. the session is three hours and then suddenly you have a whole hour to do the intro talk, to get all the questions, to get to know them. So this is also like working with yourself, knowing where your limits are, how you work. There is no point rushing it and finding solutions when you can just add more time. It's simple. Yes, I think it's not, not a financial issue. I, I do charge the time, but um, well, um, Maybe customers uh, don't like to pay that much time. Uh, so Let me, I can respond another way. So then I feel it went a little off topic here because I was in the middle of something else. But what I would say is that you have an initial conversation before when they contact you. So you have either them writing down an email. This is my oh, history. Gosh. You can have a pre-made form where clients can fill in that you go through. Yeah. Or you have a 20 minute or half an hour pre consultation. So, anyway, you want to have a little bit of knowledge about your clients before they come to you, anyway. You know, yeah. sometimes they write <laughs> a lot and then you can ask if you don't, can you summarize it? But yeah. some form of initial conversation. And yeah. also, like, you, you, yeah, you can dig into things forever, but try to find this essence of what's going on. Did that answer your question? Yes. I'm, I'm not I, yeah yeah so i i feel it's a bit off topic there is not i mean um, i feel we were talking about the boundaries setting up the, well, this is the boundary yes but i'm i'm satisfied with the answer thank you okay proceed <laughs> <laughs> thank you you're so kind <laughs> all right all right i'm gonna mute you now yeah so uh, uh, basically but it's a great the conversation Peter we can also go into it more later mm. um, where were we in yeah Number when the client session. boundary in a session when clients on the mattress so now you have made the agreement what is the intention you have checked out where is your clients boundaries are they quite healthy with them or not and uh, then before starting a session you will always say that again this session is for you and only for you and I'm here in service for you. And if you at any time, I mean, these are my words, use them or make up something else. <laughs> if you at any time uh, feel that it's, you want more or less of something, please let me know. You can never harm me or, uh, or offend me by making your requests. And uh, then at any time, if you want me to stop, I want you to say stop. And if you can't express yourself, you, I ask them to tap in the mattress. So if they would go into freeze response, and so I would have another outcome. Uh, I just, can I add something to it? Absolutely. Is that sometimes it happens that the client is not really clear about where their boundaries are. They cannot even talk. And this is what I said earlier. Once you agree the playing field and you des decide what you're going to work on, what that's going to look like, then it's my job as a practitioner, or it's going to be your job, to keep that playing field safe, to see things and respond to the client, even though they might not be able to respond themselves. So in the case, Sana says, if you wanted to stop or do something, tell me. Fair enough. But sometimes it does happen the client is completely like unable to talk. They're completely in a different universe, yet you as a practitioner, can see and feel that something has to happen. You either have to stop or you have to do something differently. So again, it's up to you to, essentially the boundary is set before the session. Once the session starts, you are maintaining it. Your job as a practitioner is to maintain the course yeah. and to do things for the client, which they also might not, once you do them, they'll be grateful and thankful, but they'll not be able to even see it or request it or express it. So part of the responsibility, big part, is to actually be so tuned into your client to listen, to really listen with everything you have, not just your ears. Watch them carefully, listen carefully, respond immediately to everything they need because this is your job. 
So this mm. is a responsibility and also keeps the safe playing field, you know. Mm. And then another thing is that sometimes clients, they come and they're like, I want this and I want this and I want a full body orgasm and I want this and they are, their body is just not ready. It's like whatsoever, it's just not ready. And again, as a practitioner, the responsibility is then to just trust that. It's like, you know, A, maybe you're not even, your body is not even open or awake enough to go into those states. We have to, you know, this is the plan. You know, we have to work from A to Z <laughs> before we go there, for example. And it can also be that we feel, even when it comes to internal work, sometimes it's just stop. The body do not want it, but the head wants it. And then it's also my responsibility as, as a practitioner to trust that and say, you know, this might disappoint you, you might get angry, but for me, it's a clear no, you're not ready. So this is another form of responsibility we have as practitioner working with people. And, and, and trusting something bigger than our own little egos or our own uh, agendas or pleasing somebody in that moment it's like okay no this means clearly no i'm not going to go there because god knows what happens if you cross that boundary that might be unspoken but you can feel it and another thing that often happens in these sexual healing sessions or arousal sessions i would say is where i haven't really heard men being might have happened, but I haven't heard that any women have abused men in sessions, but I heard about a few women being, or quite a lot by now actually, women being abused. And potentially it comes, you know, there is somebody working with pleasuring, uh, pleasuring sessions and they, you know, have this woman who suddenly gets all turned on and awake and alive and and they just get hor and the practitioner just get horny and turns into its own desire and this is this can happen it's nothing wrong we're all human you can feel turned on you can feel desire but it's what you do with it so in that moment it's like no for fuck's sake this is a test this is where i am committed to growth and transformation more than diving into my own desires and some people don't give a shit. They don't have that, uh, that uh, intention either. They're just self-serving, you know. It's that end to the... To but there's the, a, a slippery slope. So I'm just going to build the scenario a little yeah. bit. Yeah. The same what Sana is saying. So there is a woman in session and she's getting more and more time. If this wasn't a session, if, for example, you met this woman in a bar or in a club or on the street and she was displaying the same kind of signs of she really likes you, she really, she's really up for it, she's verbal about it, she's telling you, come on, I want you inside me, come kiss me, do something. It would be okay to, okay, well, the conversation has moved on and we can further the game and we can potentially make love or whatever, you know. When this happens in a session, it's not true. And this really you need to understand. Like basically the thing about the people in a session is Conscious brain agreed to something before the session. This is a cognitive, grounded, rational part. The reptile brain, the body, the emotional body, has completely different understanding of reality. And in its reality, it's totally okay that when I'm turned on, I have sex. Or when I ask for sex, I get sex. Totally normal. But, and there is nothing wrong with it. But it creates so much problems after the session because one day two day three day week after the session the client will suddenly start coming back down to and start thinking like what the hell happened there i didn't want that i mean i did ask for it and i begged for it and i got it but that's not really what i wanted then i don't feel good about it mm. so this is the slippery slope that we're telling you about that you really have to be like a watchful eye like this is why i say what you agree before the session only that will happen Mm. During the session, you almost need to be like a horse with the blinkers. Mm. Like, this is the path, and mm. you can beg me, you can pay me triple, you can mm. do whatever you want. I will not do it because I know that I'm not talking to a conscious, responsible person. I'm talking mm. to a reptile brain who has gone completely wild mm. and wants something which is normal and okay, but not in the session. Mm. Because in a session, they're there to work on the vulnerable self. They're there to really have the freedom to express anything they want to express, in this mm. case, sexual desire, for example. But it doesn't mean by any stretch of imagination. This is not an imitation. 
for therapists to join in. This is just the state of the client. So as a therapist, you really have to, I mean, I emphasize it so much because I fell on that one a few times. So speaking from experience, you know, it's a slippery slope because it happens so slowly, gradually over the session, you know, one hour, two hour before you know it, you're doing something that's like, whoa, <laughs> this is not okay. And for that reason, this is where the boundaries come really handy. Mm. It's like it's a textbook for safety and res responsible yeah. way. And then once the session finishes and the client is probably frustrated because nothing more happened, then you can say, hey, listen, if you feel like this and maybe if I feel like this next session, we can potentially do that or something else. But this really gives them the freedom, gives them the safety to actually touch the layers of honor, integrity, self-responsibility, uh, liking oneself. Uh, it builds good things, good, good foundation in a person when they're being honored, even when they're requesting clearly something else. But yeah. afterwards, they will thank you. I mean, Sana, yeah. you had this experience. Yeah, and I was, you know, that's why probably you were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to share a story. Yeah, do it. <laughs> living, quick, huh? yeah, living by example. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I remember when I started in this field and when I started to have these pleasure sessions from men. And for the first time in my life, oh my God, I had this man giving me one of these most amazing sessions and I got so turned on. And I was like, holy fuck, I didn't know that I could receive pleasure for the benefit of myself without giving back, without having sex, without doing anything. And it, this was in the beginning of my journey within the sexual healing field and it completely shifted my whole reality and therefore for me who has sexual abuse in the background and come from abusive relationships and all that I'm talking by my own experience here <laughs> and 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 the time I, I was like oh holy fuck you know I got you know, I had many sessions with this man and, and at times I got so turned on by him. I was like, please, just please, just fuck me. <laughs> so he's like, no. <laughs> you know, and I was, and I was like, I, I, I can I promise you I was begging this man and he always kept his word and I could go bananas, you know. And for some part it felt good because I felt safe. Hmm. And this I know it. he wouldn't use me and until today, you know, I, I, I mean, of course, I'm still turned on by him, but we're good friends. And, and I, I thanked him from the bottom of my heart for this experience, because I know the value of not acting upon those desires in a session. It has empowered me so much. And I know it empowers my clients too, because the, not only am I able to feel all this pleasure for the benefit of myself, I'm being very, very empowered. I'm also allowed to express my desires without being shamed. So somebody's just holding space for me without taking advantage of me being in a high arousal state. I mean, so, basically, so, uh, is, uh, the, is, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, the core, the core values in life, mm -hmm. they have to be rock solid. Like a person has to stand, rest on certain things which are solid, such as trust in life, such as, I mean, and, and the unfortunate thing is that most of us grow up through the parenting and schooling system, and the, the whole society, which doesn't take care of that. It just wants to abuse you, use you, lower your energy as, and frequency as much as possible, debauchery, self-pleasure, masturbation, kind of nothing wrong with it, but it kind of tends to go into shadow side of it a lot. And because of that, most of our clients don't have healthy boundaries. They don't have that firm standing mm. hold on this is solid, this is healthy, I'm respected, I'm loved, I'm taken care of, life protects me, uh, I'm not being taken from. And so the experience that Sana had, in a way there would be nothing wrong if the guy did make love with her. They would have a nice experience. But instead of having a nice experience, Sana had reaffirmation and imprint of this solidity that I'm talking about, mm -hmm. the ground that doesn't move, mm -hmm. the way you feel so stable, so supported, the mm -hmm. internal core, internal uh, radar for the life gets stronger, gets empowered. And this is the benefit. This is like a huge benefit for yeah. most people. This is one of the biggest reasons why we don't 
falling for that trap. Yeah. And there will be nothing this, wrong, but it, it, this is great. Yeah. 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 And I say, and, and, and again, uh, God, I lost, lost the thread. Yeah, I want to add to that. Like, I mean, everybody are free human beings. So if any of you decide like, hey, I want to offer sex in my session, go for it, you know, and be clear about it. Be transparent, you know. Advertise it, set a field. Advertise that if you do it, you know, but don't, don't do, cross the lines of something that you said you don't do because then you go into abuse and misuse. This is it. So, so, I mean, there are people who do beautiful initiation, tantric initiation sessions, which is amazing where they actually initiate people into different uh, stages of consciousness. And this is like a gift, you know, but then it's a clear intention what is offered. Maybe we didn't clarify this as a part of a boundary setting before the session or even before, before the session. So decide as a practitioner, decide what is it that you offer. Mm. There's absolutely nothing wrong with sex work, but call yourself a sex worker. Mm. And this is what you do. And it's open and it's written and this is what you do. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it, but as a practitioner, you need to be super clear. Where is your boundary? Mm -hmm. Do I allow them? First of all, do I make love with them? Yes or no? And then stick to it. Do I allow them to touch me during the session? Yes or no? And how do they touch me? And where do they touch me? Maybe I'm okay for them to touch me on the leg, but I'm definitely not okay if they start playing with my hair. Like you need to have it clear so that when the situation happens in the session, your immediate response is like yes or no. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm in mean, iron insecurity, uh, yeah. awkwardness, zero. So yeah. do, they, do we have a fluid bond? <clears throat> Some practitioners have a fluid bond, many, meaning mixing my saliva and my bodily fluids with my clients. This, this also includes, for example, which happened to me, and, <laughs> and my ex-wife, she lost it because she was present in a session, and the woman session giver who was the armor in my throat, when she needed to uh, lubricate uh, her fingers, instead of using oil, she was using her saliva. So she would kind of spit on her hand and then go into my throat. For me, that's okay. My wife lost it. <clears throat> is this okay? Am I okay for that to happen? There is nothing wrong. It just has to be communicated. Uh, the, the, like, actually, I encourage you to start writing down areas of boundaries for yourself in, and clients, yeah. obviously. What do I offer? How do I dress? How do they dress? What is allowed? What is not allowed? What am I okay with? What am I not okay with? Everything is okay and there are no judgments as long as it's within integrity. Therefore, communicated, clear, talked about, open, disclosed, transparent. Mm -hmm. So this is really the whole thing about boundaries, you know? It's everything is okay, just stick to whatever you want to do and nothing mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Because that builds the core, that produces mm -hmm. that solid mm -hmm. foundation people yeah <clears throat> just remember that when we work with sexual energy and this is such a sticky area and and some women also they go into um, if they go into high high aroused states they actually lose healing because their body can be so trained that when they get turned on they get so turned on and and they just want to be really really they actually come away from this themselves and this is another uh, it, this is also where we as practitioners want to calm them down. We call this over arousal or hyper arousal. So you want to help the client to come back home and feel deeper. Yeah. Because if they get too aroused or in too high states, they can also they actually lose contact with themselves. So this is it means it can be fun. We're like, oh wow, look at this body. It's like woohoo, you know, doing all kinds of things. But then it's our it's, then we start to play off our own agenda. Potentially, I don't say that it is like this, but then again, to have the client to chill out, take a deep breath, encourage them to feel deeper and feel deeper. We have a question from Michelle. She's asking, how do you guide the frustration or anger from a client when he or she asks for more, but you said no? <laughs> That's a good one. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Sana, you want it to? I can take it, yeah. Yeah. Then, then you're going to stay, this is again your boundary. So... You just stay really firm with your boundary. Like, this is how it is. I'm not going further. And if, they get, uh, if they're really getting nasty with you and pushing you, then you can ask them to leave. You yep. can say, okay, session closed. Stop a session. It's not there. Yeah, you stop a session. It happened to me when somebody 
did something I definitely didn't like. And I said, okay, take off your clothes. Uh, take off your clothes. <laughs> Put on your clothes and, and go. So it, if, the thing is, if you're, we can meet all kinds of clients in a room. We never really know who shows up. I mean, uh, so I'll hopefully, take it. wait, I'm just going to, uh, so hopefully they are listening to us and you can use it in a, in a good way to see what's underlying that. Why, why is it so hard to take this? No, is it that some way to be a magician and transform yep. this into a shame free or shameless or an open dialogue or why they don't accept but it all depends on why they are getting frustrated and angry. This is it, basically. So in my case, if this was, the, if somebody was getting so frustrated and angry, I could stop body work and then start a coaching session, start a talk therapy, and to actually dig into the. I mean, clearly they are reactivated. Clearly, the anger or frustration is a reaction. So either the expectation is not met, in which case they are shadow expectation because they didn't voice it before the session. Mm. If we talked about it before the session, then we agree, no problem. But if it happens during the session, that means they walked in already kind of sneaky, expecting something, but not being honest about it. So this is a beautiful piece to talk about, express it, work through it, and show them how the pattern doesn't serve them. Mm. But if they keep insisting, then I'm like, okay, out. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we agreed this. And basically, I'm not prepared that this is the responsibility. The ultimate responsibility is for the best of the client. Mm. And it's not for the best of a client for me to play into the ego. And this particular anger would be ego, like some kind of form of ego. I'm not that about the ego. If they can't be with straightness and I'm straight, then please leave the door. That's okay with me. But I'm not going to play into a drama. And it's almost like a little kid is throwing the toys out of the pram. Yeah, I want you to touch me and you don't want to touch me. Oh, yeah. Hello. I mean, so there is a reason. But basically, the best thing would be to ask questions. So what's going on? You're, you're clearly frustrated and angry. What's really going on? You know, did you have expectations? Did you, you know? So Michelle, does that answer your question? Should we unmute you? Michelle, can we hear? Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you very much. It does? Yeah. Cool. Yes. And especially, I mean, it can be a great way to practice our own boundaries. We can learn very, very much about ourselves to our clients as yes. well. Uh, how, what yes. kind of clients, what are the situation that arises? Yeah. What do I learn about myself? How can I, you know, get more stable in myself as a practitioner, etc.? Mm, mm, mm. So is it, is it also uh, maybe a case of reparenting? Could yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, could be. Definitely. Depends on all what the what the what the issue is about. You know, mm. what is the why is the client angry? How is the expression? What is it that is not being met? So absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks for asking. All right. Are there any other questions? Are you breathing? And there was silence. <laughs> <laughs> We're muted. But... <laughs> okay, so there is a bit. But Karen, yeah? Yeah. Um, this isn't a question, it's just an observation from, from my own practice mm. that when, when I hold to my boundaries, my confidence in my ability to hold the space successfully for my client goes up. Yeah. Because I like, know I'm really stable and I'm grounded yeah. yep. and that I'm not gonna get pulled off center regardless of exactly. what what they do. Yeah. And and it makes the circumstances, even if they're disappointed or frustrated, it makes the circumstances a place where they get to see what it looks like and feels like on both sides of the equation mm. when there are healthy boundaries being held. Mm. Um, and it makes a difference for both of us in the trust that's built yes, it does. For, fu for future sessions. Mm. Yes, it does. It does. So that, that's all I wanted to add into the mix. Thank you. It's I mean, this is another, this is, yeah, this is another bit of like, how do you want to present yourself? Nay, nay, present. Who are you as a session giver? And where is your line? What do you represent in the world? Why are you really doing this job? And the deeper I can go into myself, my own integrity and rooting in like, <laughs> integrity is the world word. Then the more I can, and this is why I'm prepared to stop a session with someone because I'm not willing to negotiate compromise 
on the imprint that, that I'm there to give. And if that imprint isn't wanted or isn't understood, that's totally okay with me. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's also what I accept as an imprint from them, right? Because that it goes it goes both, both ways. ways. Mm. Their behavior towards me, if I'm not holding my container strongly, puts an imprint on me that I don't want there, and then I've got to process that either you, with them or you, on my own or with somebody else mm, after the mm. session. But you know, the beauty also of that, very often people, uh, and I'm going to use the word kids, kids test boundaries. Mm. And uh, if client is testing boundaries to the point that they're getting angry, frustrated, they're throwing the toys out of the pram. The kid is really testing a parent because in that case, you are the parent. Mm. So in this session, for example, they got frustrated, angry, and said, you know what? I'm not willing. If you can't be with it, I said, no. If you can't, in fact, both of us said, no, I'm just holding that ground. If you can't be with that, there is a door. The next session, they're more likely to open 10 times deeper because now they've tested the ground. They yeah. gave you a test, you passed it, you didn't shake off, you didn't start, yeah, yeah, yeah. suddenly there is huge depth mm. they can actually relax deeper into. Mm. So there are layers and layers of mm. that, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> And it can also be people who have trust issues to try test out in different ways just to totally. see if, if, if they can trust you. Yeah, it mm -hmm. depends into what you say. But. And, and this is why it's so important to know your own ground. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we need to try out here and there and, and, and until we find like, no, this is actually what I do and this is what I don't. And mm -hmm. never, ever compromise that yeah. in a session. It's not worth it. It's just not no. worth it, you know. All right. So... Thank you. Questions. Let Thank me just, you, uh, Karen, I'm going to move on. Questions? We have about yeah, seven minutes left. Yeah, we'll go for some minutes. Yeah. Anything else? Is this Dominic, helpful? Dominic, Dominic, hang on a second. Okay. Could you summarize in like three or four points uh, everything that you did talk today? Like if I need to remember something from today. Yeah. So what would that be? Yeah. Okay. What are your bound what are your boundaries? What are the client's boundaries? Stick to them. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking we can Laura, we can send a, an email after this, huh? To the all the so we can send out we can stay we can point this up, like make a little handout and send out to you guys so you can have a yeah. Uh, a sheet with this. What's I think in terms of what, uh, how, what, what are important points to remember. Mm. In, remember that integrity, responsibility, and boundaries are one thing. Mm. It's, it's part of the same picture. So the most important thing to get away from this webinar is to design yourself, to question yourself, and to find out what do you want to do? What is your, what is your offer? What are you offering to people? And this already is a boundary and a playing field. Once you design, if you like, what are you offering, the next thing is to inform your clients and to have agreed boundary. And then the th third part of it is execute a boundary without fail. Do not quiver. And that's really the, the main thing that we talked about today. Yeah, and stick to it, stick and always the session is always for the client. Yeah. It's not about you. It's not for you, even though you learn a lot and it's great in many ways, but the session is not for you. And do not ever follow your own desires. Yeah. And cross somebody's boundaries for the benefit of yourself. That's really like bottom line, I feel. Mm. Do you have another Does question? Does that help you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You clear? Yeah. Okay. We can still summarize it and send it out also as a handout. Yeah. <laughs> Do that. Yeah. All right. I'm going to mute you now. Okay. Any more questions before we say goodbye for today? Comment? Yeah. Robert? Uh, Robert, wait. Yeah. Uh, not yet. Yeah. So I, I mean, this is something that I've been thinking a lot about.
in terms of that I don't do sexual dearmoring for a, a lot of reasons. Uh, I don't feel competent now to do it and we're ready or have my, done my own work. So I'm very clear in my conversations that that's not what I'm offering. And I make sure the clients know that such a thing exists because the people that I've worked with, because they're going to go look this up on the internet and they're going to see, not you guys, maybe they'll see you guys, but they may see a lot of other things. Mm. I want them to understand what it is and what it isn't. Mm. But what's, what's interesting is that, I mean, I had a couple situations where, uh, like in one client in over four sessions, the trust developed to where we were dealing with, with something that was psychologically sexual. It wasn't mm. sexual genital but it was sexual feeling. Like, for example, she was saying that, uh, like she said she felt like she had two animals in her body. One was a panther and one was a stallion. We distinguished that pretty clearly, what we were talking about. And we decided to work with the panther. And the panther was more of the sexual energy. And it was not sexual energy in the sense that it was uh, erotic. But it was, you know, breathing into the belly and I was working more in her lower belly and I was encouraging her to make sounds and this you know, emotion started coming out. It was all really good work. It was clearly in the sexual area, but it wasn't sexual. Mm. So I don't think it crosses my boundary to say I don't do sexual work to not, you know, to work in that area. But this, this other woman uh, who was referred to me by the same person who came, uh, we did a session and again, very clear about all of these things. And um, at the end, you know, she was, everything was fine. We, we, we ran overtime, which was my fault. I did not manage the time boundary uh, well. But, you know, she basically referred two people to me and said she didn't, she wasn't interested in any more sessions. And I went, huh? <laughs> Why is she referring two clients to me and she doesn't want to come back for any more sessions? Hmm. So I, I asked her about it. And she was, she was willing to explain it to me. And it turns out that I didn't know it, but she was worried because she felt that she might have had some smell, you know? Like in her mind, her attention was on her genitals, mm. which was not, there was no smell. There wasn't, but in her mind, this was something that was present. We never got anywhere near anything sexual. It was an introductory first session we were working on unrelated types of things. But I realized from that, that even though I've, you know, been clear about it, that she was bringing her concern in the sexual area in just anyway, it was present. And mm -hmm. I didn't even realize it was there. So it, I'm just realizing how, how tricky this whole area is. Of course. With, it, with, with human yeah. beings, you know? Yeah. And especially when it comes to sexual energy or people might feel a little bit of arousal or, it immediately can get twisted and the fear comes up. So clearly she had a fear here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, like, for example, if, I'm, if I was working with the way we, we work up the legs into that position, and then it, it has a sexual implication, the nature of, you yeah. know, that posture. Mm. And I, I left her in that posture to, you know, I covered her with a blanket. I usually do that with, at the end, like a sarong or a blanket. And I, and I left her, and she was in that position for, you know, a while while she was processing. And it didn't occur to me that I should have told her she could change her position or have changed her position or that I need to even be thinking about that. And, and that was also where the session got off with time boundaries because I figured, okay, well, let her process. And she processed for an hour, mm. you know, and I didn't interrupt it. I'm thinking, well, should I interrupt it or not interrupt mm. it? I imagine she was thinking the same thing. Is he going to say something? And I realized none of this was clear and it was my responsibility. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So what you can do my is, yeah, exactly. And this, this is great. You know, I mean, if you, have, if you have the extra time to let somebody process, then sure, do it. You know, you can say then just the communication. So it doesn't become awkward. You know, well, the but, thing is, look, I'm going to do yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one thing more I, 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 I was thinking of. So one thing is the communication. What are you willing to do? If you have another hour, fine. If you don't have another hour, then you deal with it. Right. But well, always, she, didn't. she had to go. And, yeah. and 
I get I it. Know that, and, no. and I'm figuring she's comfortable and wants to be. Yeah. And it turns out she was uncomfortable in that position. Yes. And didn't say anything. And I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. I should know that she's uncomfortable, right? No, it's it not. Could, that's her. That's her responsibility. No. You read no, my, Wait, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say one more thing. I'm gonna say one more thing. quick. So what you can learn, potentially learn from this situation also, you can say that some clients I've had, you know, if you feel comfortable, have felt that sexual energy is rising in their body. And this, if you feel that, you don't need to block it. Everything is welcome. So make sure, always highlight that anything that comes up in a session is welcome in the session. Doesn't matter what it is. Right. So you can just use this, like how can you use this in in for the next session how can you use this as fuel every situation is fuel for learning this is one of the situations where you didn't react to something you, you should have known mm. she right. didn't, she didn't because she was either embarrassed or scared or basically <clears throat> session giver is a parent you're the papa she is a child or if you're a woman you're a mama and the client is always a child it's up to you to know you cannot leave someone with legs open like this for an hour. Or if you do, then you come back in 10 minutes, five minutes. And if they're still like that, you kind of straighten the legs because you know it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You also, if you're a responsible parent, then it's up to you to state the time boundary. Right. So if it's at the first insight, sight of you feeling awkward, immediate action. Go in and yeah. say, hey, yeah. 15 minutes passed. You're welcome to stay. I'm going to go and do my shit on a computer yeah. or whatever. I'll come back or you come out when you're ready. Mm. It's up to you to communicate. It's up to you to hold the boundary. So what I feel you did then is you kind of session ended, did you kind of boundary really there. Right. And there's nobody yeah, holding space anymore. No. So right. this is clearly your duty, your job. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I didn't hear that she was laying with the legs out. For well, then, it was in, so that, oh, wait, wait, in that diamond wait. position. Yeah, you know, I get it. But yeah. or you can always end the session what i always do is that i i straighten my clients are laying with the legs straight i put on a blanket a, a, a towel and a blanket and i say session is now complete this right. firm ending and i check in how are you and if they're still processing like dion said either i sit with them for a while and then if i feel are you okay and i have the extra time i say i go and do my things yeah because then they can lay there, you know, and I know they're okay. And they know also that I'm doing my thing. And the, the boundary is fixed. Again. Yeah. So, right. so if we leave it like that, there is like, it's still this, it's just flowy, watery. There is no clarity. Yeah. Which is exactly yeah. what we're trying to, this is the pinnacle. Thanks for yeah. this example, because this yeah, is the pinnacle great. of the whole boundary session, the whole yeah. of this webinar. This is what happens when the boundaries are not clear. Mm. Oh yeah. It's so it's, it, it became obvious and it was like, you know, I realized that, there's so much more to this than just knowing what to do with your hands when you're working. Yeah, of course. Like there's just like there's many, so many levels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's great, Robert. This is a such such yeah. a great, great uh, experience for you. Beautiful. You would never do it again. So that's great. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Robert. We're gonna mute you. Yeah. Now. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. So we have time for one, possibly two more quick questions, and then yeah. we're gonna wrap it up for today. It's so funny, even though you're muted, it is like another silence to this, this yeah, webinar. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. super interesting. Is this helpful for you? You can nod your head. If it's not, you can shake it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's helpful. Good. All right, so listen, uh, it's already 10 minutes Michelle, past an hour. Yeah. Yes? Where are we? But turn this into, yeah, I'm working. Michelle says, uh, but turn this uh, into an online course. This is so important. So I'm working on an online course, which will be released maybe March or April. I already have one if you want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dan has one also, but on the boundaries, etc. cetera. Yeah, yeah. Much more. It's super important. I agree. You can't highlight it enough, especially in this field or in many fields. All I right. have yours, Dian, she yeah, says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah great. Right. And if so, anybody else of you who have not participated in our training or so, we have an absolutely fantastic, I don't know if you heard about it, but probably the Dearming training, the next one coming up in Estonia, end of May. And then we have the second one in early in November, November, right? Yeah. We oh, also wow. have the induction in March, which yeah. is the sister project to, it's basically personal development rather yeah. than practitioners training yeah so if any of you wish to be de-armored 
and like properly for six days, yeah. then uh, join us in Holland. You can find all the info on our website, mm. theamorintraining.com. And we will send out this. I will um, write, write something down. So we will summarize this event and send out to you as well so you can have some guidelines. Yeah. There's another question here. Hope to. Yeah. I don't really understand that. Hope to, maybe. Hope to attend the training. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. Great. Right. We'd be lovely so, to see you there. Are we going to wrap this meeting up? And thank you so much, everybody, for your time. We enjoyed yeah. doing this. And uh, we're going to see you again. You're welcome. <laughs> we can unmute, actually, if somebody wants to say yeah, okay. something. Okay, let's do yeah. it. Unmute all. Boom. Yeah. Great. Anyone want to say something? Thank you, both of you. Mm. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you very all much. Of you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I find it very helpful to hear other people's experiences. Life. life. Yeah. Life cases are the best, you know. So yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Totally. Thank, you, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is really good. <laughs> the great fuck ups. No. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> how we learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So All right. thank you so much, you. guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yes. Have ciao ciao. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. See you.